Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire in, well, a quite nice and sunny Scotland. It's about 10 degrees, about 50 Fahrenheit, and the forecast is for no rain whatsoever. I am back, back on the medieval fort and village site. Now, you might remember this field here, which actually used to be, this point here used to be an old pond which is still holding water. The ground was frozen in this field last time, but it's thawed out now. My battery ran out the last time I was here. However, I did find an incredible eyes only find, which is right here. So this has been identified by some of you as potentially a very early Christian stone or religious object. Still waiting to learn more about it, but some people saying, well, it could be all the way back to the, the 5th or 6th century, which would be tremendous. But what I do know is that there used to be an old pond over here. There used to also be a medieval village here. And more importantly, on the far side of this field is a medieval fort that dates all the way back to the 1100s and was famously sacked by one William Wallace in 1296 or 1297 AD when he was on his way to lay siege to Dundee. So tremendous potential. Got some nice things off it last time, including the stone. And uh, famously as well, the castle was sacked by Oliver Cromwell's army under General Monk in 1651. So we've got lots of history, loads of potential, and already we've had one or two good finds. Last time the ground was a bit thawed, eh, sorry, a bit frozen should I say, but now it has thawed, no excuses. I'm going to go with, as ever, the XP Deus 2, and I'm gonna go with Program 3, Sensi Full Tones, and I've even remembered my toothbrush. Right, let's see what we can get. Oh, and I should also say 10,500 subscribers absolutely over the moon and hopefully we're going to find something good today. Again, I should have mentioned at the start, this, even though it's a fort and a village, is not a scheduled ancient monument, so always check before you metal detect. First of all, you need the landowner's permission and secondly, make sure it's not a protected site because if it is, you're in a lot of trouble. Now, it's never been detected before I've only had one outing, which was just a few hours long, cut short because my battery went dead. And right here, one minute in, we've got a 78, first signal. Let's see if we get off to a good start. I would say it's not a coin, but it's out the hole, so not too deep. This field's been ploughed about two months ago, six weeks ago, so it's had a bit of time to settle. I think we've got a clod to get started. It's a pretty, it's a pretty windy day, so I'm going to put the new microphone to the test, and that could be it right there, actually, and I think it is. It is. We have got ourselves a little musket ball, I think. We have. We've got ourselves a musket ball. Sorry for the state of my fingers. I was out digging in the garden before I came out. Try to tidy it up. I've got a terrible problem with moles at the moment. Anyway, that is a little musket ball, probably from a rifle rather than a pistol, but. I suppose it's small enough, it could be a pistol shot, but either way, it's a good start. It looks like it's been fired, it's got a little dimple. It's quite sandy, soft soil in this field, so probably impacted quite softly. And date-wise, I would guess probably 16, 1700s could even date to the 1651 siege. Right, good start, on to the next. This target a little bit squeaky. The readout's good. 83, 84. 
but yeah. Somewhere about there, but not really convinced. Well, damn it. 14 inches down, a can of McEwen's Export, which is a beer formerly brewed in Edinburgh. This is a mid-tone, but it's a much more consistent signal. Coming through at a 63. Could be lead, I think. What a button. Oh, get out. I've got myself a new spade on order. Well, I say on order. It's actually a Christmas present from my in-laws. Should be here in a few days' time because I'm fed up with this black Ada spade because of the lip on the back that I keep mentioning. The way I dig holes, it just doesn't suit me. Might be perfect for others, but not for me. Okay, we're out. We've got a clod shot, I think. Ah, that's it right there. I think. Yep, I think that's a bit of lead. It is. That is a bit of lead. Check the hole in a little second. I think we could have a... We could have a lead token, maybe. It looks pretty round to me. Could be a button or a hem weight. But, not only have I remembered the brush, but I've also got my squishy bottle, so... Let's see. Looks like a cross to me. Looks like a cross to me on there. It's a bit damaged on one side. What's the other side? Plain or decorated? Looks to be plain. Maybe a... Maybe a one there in the middle? Possibly. Right. We will uh, dry this out a little bit. And I'll get back to you in a little second. This is the reverse. It's got a little sort of... Maybe like a one in the centre there, I don't know, maybe that's just a just a little blemish, a little mark, but on that side, look at that, there's no doubt whatsoever that has been a cross with probably circles in all four corners just like the little tokens that we've had before it's a little bit battered, a little bit bruised, but potentially could be some time between the, the 12 and the 1600s, so good find, I think that's five maybe six of these i've had off this field or the fields immediately around it so gaming tokens tallies maybe even past as currency but it's a very good sign hopefully more to come just off to the side of the tin foil or the bit of foil whatever it is um as again look do you see what i see it's an eyes only find it's not metal i think it's a stone but look at it, A, the colour, and B, the shape. I mean, that just doesn't look like the kind of stone that you should be finding here, in this part of Perthshire. That's more like a, a beach pebble, or something like that. Yeah, it is so smooth, it's unbelievable. And the colour as well. It's got that orangey red sort of colour to it. I mean, look around, there are no stones anything similar to that anywhere at all. So, again, it begs the question I've got it in my other pocket. You know, I know it's a different colour, but, you know, is it related? Is there some significance between? These sort of polished pebbles, albeit one of them is decorated and the other is not. Let me know in the comments, am I just overthinking things? I didn't film this one, but it was a pretty solid 66. It's out the hole. I don't want, to, don't want you to see me bouncing around all the time. Oh, that could be, it could be a bit of lead. It is. It's a bit of lead and it looks like it's got something on it again. Oh, 
Right, well this looks interesting. Certainly doesn't look familiar to anything I've seen before. Right, the trusty toothbrushes here. Try and get you in the light but out the sun. Eh, sorry, no. Out the wind but into the sun. That is lead. There is definitely some sort of insignia on there. So what is that? I have never had one of these before. It looks as if it's been a tube sort of shape at one point. And it's been flattened. Even though it's a new field, you often find that similar area produces similar sort of finds. So what is that? It's like a scroll of letters maybe? Maybe someone's initials? And on that side, not really sure what that is. Is it a bird? It's like a beak. Oh, dropped it. Shock horror. Um, ah, dropped it again. Hang on. Right. What is that? Is that almost like a bird sitting on a branch? Or am I just imagining that? Hmm, very interesting. Right, I've no idea on that one. So again, I'm going to have to go over to you all. My, de my guess is not particularly old. I'm going to say 16, 17, maybe even the beginning of the 1800s, but I'm happy to be proved wrong. Let me know in the comments below. I think we could have our first coin. Solid. 85, I think it's got to be. I think it has got to be a coin. Can't see it being anything else. Sounds really sweet. And we're out. Really big bar on it. High tone. Non-ferrous. Has to be a coin. It's going to be a penny. Oh. That's it there, I think. That is it there. Get the pinpointer out the way. Now that is going to be a penny. Definitely a coin. 100%. A little impression. And as you can see, quite sandy soil. It looks pretty smooth. I'm going to guess Victoria. Because her coins were in circulation right through to the 1940s, 1950s. Even though she gave up the throne, well, died, is the better word to be, the better way to put it, in 1901. There she is. There she is, the young head, looking to the left, very well worn. They often are, because they were in circulation for so long. Have we got a date? Sometimes the date survives quite well. Oh, there you go, a very clear 1892 1892, and you can see Britannia. Let me just get out the out the wind in case the wind is uh, too bad. I might need to edit the video. Um, so there we go. 1892, very smooth. Queen Victoria, young head. So this is just nine years before she died, and she's still using the young head on her coins. Otherwise, though, it's in not bad condition. Good find. First coin of the day. Barely a couple of feet away from the Victoria, we've got another signal here. 77, 78. It's a little bit erratic. Could be lead. Could be lead. Readout's a little bit high for a button, I would say, but again, relatively shallow without the hole. And that's it, another clod shot. Oh, it's in that half. Because the soil's so wet, it's just all sticking together. We're in here somewhere. Still in here. I think we've got another. I think we've got another musket ball. Yep, it is. Musket ball. 
number two. So certainly consistent with someone using a lot of firepower. What's it like compared with the last one? Looks pretty similar in size. Yeah, I would say so. Pretty identical, to be honest. So maybe from the same rifle, maybe from a identical make. In fact, the one on the left may be just marginally bigger. Marginal. So yeah, two musket balls. Again, probably from the 16, 1700s, but maybe contemporary with the 1651 siege. On to the next. Had myself a very, very faint 65. Just took the side out of the, the clod there. And right there, I think we might have another. That's it. I think it's another lead token. And it's got some good detail on it from what I can see. The other side, it's a double-sided one, I think, because that looks like a cross. It's a bit smaller than the previous ones. But I think we've got a lead token. Let's give it a little wash. Or should I brush it? No, maybe I'll brush it, actually. And that is a beauty. Look at the detail on that. Ha! Huh. It's probably the best one I've had yet. What have we got on this side? Again, it's that star design. Except this one looks like it's got three dots. One, two, three. So what is that? Does anyone know what that design means? Has it got a significance? So that is brilliant. That is brilliant. So who knows? Could be 12, 13, 14, 15, even 1600s. So again, let me know in the comments if you've got any idea. Maybe it was held by William Wallace himself. I've got a little mid-tone here, coming through 62. 61. 62, just about where the rotten potato is. Just about there. Let's try and do a little gentler excavation. Still in the hole. Still in the hole. I think I've got it that time. No, I haven't. Yeah, I have. Hmm, it's a bit all over the place, to be honest. There's a lot of coke signals coming through. Generally, coke with the XP DS2, it just doesn't bother me at all, but I can hear it where it's, uh, when it's quite intense, so there's a lot of it. 28 to 31 it normally comes through at and I can hear quite a lot I think that's it there it's not a musket ball it's not heavy enough but it's a little ball of some description that's interesting right let's get that out of the way what is that where's the water bottle right there so what is that? Maybe copper? Oh, it could be decorated. Let's get you in the sun a bit. It is decorated. What is that? That's the fleur de lis there. The flower of the lily. There's another one. Oh, this could be really interesting. But the light's not very good, is it? Has it got enamel on it? can see a little bit of red coming through as well. I think we could have a pretty epic little find here. So it's covered in fleur-de-lis. It's made of four individual segments. So that's it looking right from the top. You can see a, uh, a fleur-de-lis in each of the, the four quarters, but it's been red enameled. It's been silver gilded, or tinned, and each of the four quarters, there's a one at the top, two in the middle, and one at the bottom. And then, it's almost like a nut, or a maybe a bell, but there's no ring. 
and there's no fitting on the top or the remains of where there's been a fitting. So what do you reckon to that? Could that be pretty old? Well, the fleur de lily is obviously a symbol of France. But, yeah, that is really interesting. It's copper, or copper alloy. And I think that could have a fair bit of age to it. Could it be like some sort of horse decoration, maybe? But let me know in the comments below. I think that could be old. I think that could be certainly four or five hundred years old, maybe more. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. I've got myself an interesting one here. So, an ear blowing 8182. Um, I don't know why I've taken my pinpointer out, it was my toothbrush I was after. But um, I just sort of scraped the surface with my foot because it was a bigger target. And look, it was popped out. What the hell is that? Now that is copper or copper alloy. And can't say I've ever had one of these before either. Now it looks like it's got a bit of age to it. You know, there's a certain there's a certain way that metal goes when it's been in the ground for a period of time. It gets a lovely patination or patina. And that is what that has got. Oh, I might have actually scuffed it. I might have scuffed it with a with a spade. Or it's the, the tractor's done it when it's been ploughed recently, but look at that. So it's got almost like a little socket there. Like that goes inside something. And then it tapers down to like a flat, rounded edge. That's not broken. That's intentional, that shape. So what is that? What is that? Part of a basket hilt sword? From the 1600s? I mean, that is a mystery. A real mystery of an item, that one. So let me know in the comments below. I don't know, I just get the feeling that could be something interesting. But, as I say, I've got no idea what. So, over to you all. A little chirpy 62. I'm literally just, that's where I got that, well, whatever it is, copper thing. Um, right close by. It's a bit of a... 62 anyway. Let's give it a bash. Could be, could be a button, I think. This bit of the field is really, really sandy. There's bits that are just pure sand. Right, we're out. Can't believe I haven't had a button yet, to be quite honest. Where's it gone? There. Oh, I think we've got another clod. Yep. We've got another clod. In fact, Stick that between my legs, in case I need it. We're in here. And we're in there, we're getting smaller. There's something. I tell you what, it could actually be a hammered coin. I was going to say it's a bit of foil. Ah, oh, I don't believe it. First hammered coin of the year. Look at that. Well, you can see it's pretty broken, it's pretty damaged, but what's the other side like? Oh, you beauty. 100% hammered silver coin. That's going to be a, a penny. I can see a head in the centre already. Right, let's get out of the wind. And let's get the spray bottle out. Look at that. Right, how good is it? Oh, get in focus. The answer is, it's a beauty. Oh, what a shame it's broken. Look at the detail on that. You 
you can see a head, the crown, you can see the locks of hair above their head, above their head, on the side of their head, well where else is it going to be? Look at that, oh what a shame it's damaged. That wasn't me, by the way, in case anyone wonders, you saw how, how cleanly I dug that out. It's just been slowly falling apart over the years from ploughing. Right, let me give this a little clean up off camera and I'll get right back to you. Now that is a hammered silver penny. On that side, you can clearly see the uh, the king in the centre with her crown on their head, the letter E D W, and that would say Edwardus, and then it would say, I think it would either say De Gracia, or it would say Rex Ang A N G, which is King of England, because this is not a Scottish coin. This is, I think, this is Edward the First, Longshanks to give him his official nickname or unofficial nickname, the Hammer of the Scots, as he was also known. So uh, he was called Longshanks because your shanks were your legs, and he had incredibly long legs. He was called the Hammer of the Scots because he gave us a little bit of trouble over the years. In 1286, Alexander III, King of Scotland, died without children. Scotland quickly descended into civil war. Very stupidly, they asked... Uh, Longshanks, Edward I, to adjudicate, to come up with the next king. He saw his opportunity and made them swear fealty as overlord of Scotland. And he installed John Balliol as the king. Eventually Balliol rebelled because Edward was taking all the money and all the young men to go and fight against France. Scotland signed the Old Alliance, as it was then known or the Old Alliance, A-U-L-D, which was a, 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 an alliance with France against England. And that's when good old William Wallace, who we know attacked this fort in 1296 or 1297, that's when he appeared on the scene. So this is a coin contemporary with our very own William Wallace, but without the dodgy accent. Now, on the back, you can see a cross... In each of the four quarters, three what are called pellets. And it would have said in Latin, civi, C-I-V-I. Then it would have said, oh no, in fact, I'm the wrong way around. It would have said civi there, C-I-V-I. Here it would say tas, T-A-S. And then it says L O N. And there it would have said D-O-N, London. City of London. That's where the coin was minted. So there you go. It's actually in pretty good condition. The brakes look fairly... That one there looks quite recent. Um, but that's been weathered away for quite some time. What a shame. Because that would have been as good an Edward as I've ever found. But that is incredible. So that is... 700 years old, is that right? 1300, yeah, 700 years old, potentially. From the time of William Wallace, or Sir William Wallace. And Edward I famously had him executed in London in 1305. But, eventually we won our independence thanks, thanks to King Robert the Bruce. Brilliant, absolutely phenomenal. Over the moon with that. Oh, just a minute later, I've got a lovely sweet signal. Well, maybe it's actually... <laughs> oh no, it's pretty good. It's an 85. Surely that's got to be a coin. Maybe on its edge. Hmm, maybe not. It sounds a bit... Sounds a bit weird. 
I don't think it's a coin. I'm changing my mind. It's definitely something hard in this hole. It could be a stone. Right, I'm going to need to get the pinpointer out because I don't know if I'm digging in the wrong place or what. No, we're out. We are out. Oh, what's that? That is a big bit of bronze. Oh my god, that weighs a ton. That is, oh, that is heavy. Is it bronze? It feels like bronze. That's a stonker of a signal. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that's bronze. Pretty sure. But then it looks maybe a bit too, too modern, too recent. What do you reckon? Right, I'm going to dry this up, dry my hands up, and get back to you in a second. Well, I really don't know about that one, to be honest. It's, it's bronze. It's definitely bronze, but it looks, you know, that just looks too good um, to be old. But I really don't know. And it looks like it's suffered some sort of catastrophic failure there. It's just literally broken away. But what is it? Well, I'm going to have to again ask you all to let me know in the comments. Is it old? Is it not old? Is it tractor related? Well, let me know in the comments below. Another nice signal here, mid tone. 65, 66, I just can't decide exactly where it is. Right about there. Let's flip that over and see if it's in or out. We're out. We're out the hole and get the Garrett carrot. I think we're there. Oh, that could be it. Yeah, that's it, I think. Look at that right there. That looks like the edge of a bit of lead to me. Haha. <laughs> It's another token. I think so. Looks like a cross on there, possibly. Yep, I think so. Right, get the toothbrush. Well done. Everyone should be commending me for not forgetting anything today. Yep, 100%. Look, you can see the cross, you can see the circles or dots. Ah, oh, yes, look at that. This one's only got three dots on it, um, but yep, that is another little lead token. It actually looks again, look like the last one. It's got a, it's got a one on it, or an eye on it, has it? I think it has. So I think there's a letter there. In fact, look at that, it's an R. Is it a letter R? I think it is. Let me straighten that out a wee bit. I think it is. I think that's a letter R. But yep, 100% another one of these little lead tokens or tallies. Let's just get the other couple out for comparison. If I can find them in my pocket. Oh, that much stuff in my pocket. I can't find them all. There's one. Um, I can't find the other one. I haven't lost it. Oh, there we are. I can feel it. There we go. There we go. So there's three. Is that all I've had? Did I get four? No, I think I got three. Oh no, wait a second. Oh no, that's my hammered coin. That is my hammered coin. So, and then I got this little bit of lead as well. Which, ah, you know what? It's a cow. It is, isn't it? That's a cow. Can you see a cow on there? 
there's like a cow and a little sheep below it. Or am I going mad? If I turn it that way, it looks like a bird sitting on a stick. But it is, I think it's a bull or a cow. Am I going mad? No, I think that is. That is definitely a bull or a cow. What do you think? Right, well there you go, there's some of the best finds of today, but maybe there'll be more to come, so let's get back on it. Brilliant. You know what? That's an R as well. Look. Oh no, that's the one I just found. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> oh, what an idiot. Right, okay. Scrub that. Let's see what else we can get. I think we've got a coin. I think we've got a penny, possibly. 85, 87, it sounds like a stick on for a penny. In that bit somewhere. 100%, that's got to be a coin. Has to be. Or aluminium. Oh, there it is there, did you see that? Look. At that. Now that is a big green penny. Great big green penny. It might be another Victoria. It looks quite smooth. Soil is very wet in this part of the field. There it is. Not much of an imprint. Oh, it's not. Look at that. It's gorgeous George. As I call him. Not going to give them too gentle a treatment. And that is a great big penny of George V. It's got a beautiful patina. So that is one penny of George V, dated 1915. And on that side, George V, by the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith and Emperor of India. And George should never have been king. He had an older brother, Albert Frederick, or Frederick Albert, who uh, who died. He was Prince of Wales and he died during an influenza outbreak at the end of the 1800s. And that thrust George V into uh, the future position of uh, the next king. So when his father, Edward VII, died in 19... 109 or 1910, George V became king and he ruled all the way through to 1936, give or take. His brother Edward Victor, Victor Edward, Victor Albert, should I say, um, is the one often considered to be Jack the Ripper, the serial killer in London. So there you go. Nice, lovely coin, beautiful patina. This one didn't sound remotely like a coin. Not even close. It was a bit of a scratchy signal. It was faint. I flipped out a little pile from the edge and listen to it now. An ear blowing 88, 87. And I can tell you 100% it's a coin because I can see it right there. And we've got ourselves yet another penny. Penny number three. Who have we got this time? Tell you what, we've got Edward the Seventh. I think we've got a full house. We have. That is Dirty Bertie, to give him his unofficial nickname. We've got three generations of uh, Queen Victoria. Because this is Queen Victoria's son. You can just make out the bald head looking to the right hand side. So this is Edward VII, the Playboy Prince. And we've got a date at the bottom of 1906. So we've got three generations of monarchy all in one day. So let me just get the other coins out that I got. Who have we got here? That's Victoria. And that is George. So, Queen Victoria ruled from 
1836, give or take, until 1901. Her son Edward, he took the throne, 1901, till about 1910. And then his son, George V, he ruled from 1910 to about 1936. So, three generations of the monarchs, all back to back, and all from the same field. Great, beautiful patina on those coins. And even better, that I can get a date off each one of them. This one's a bit jumpy. Ninety-one, ninety-two, but it's going down to 88. Sounds a bit squeaky. I think it's going to be aluminium, but if it turns out to be a Georgian coin or even a bit of silver, I'll be happy. Right, we're out. Still sounds a bit scratchy. I think it's in there. It is in there. No, it isn't. It's near there. Is that it there? That's it there. Oh my god, look at the size of that. That is a stonking big bit of lead. I think. This could be old as well. My god, look at the size of that. Look at the size of that. So it's got like a massive big circle, almost like a big stud on that side. God, that weighs about, that weighs about two ounces. Don't see any decoration though. God, that is one big bit of lead. So, what is that? It's almost like the top of a, top of a lead nail or something, is it? But, I don't know. Again, I've never had one of these before. I've never had so many strange finds out of the one field. So what do you reckon that is? Again, I'm going to have to rely on you all to let me know in the comments below. Could it be medieval? Let me know. This one was a little 62. Uh, to be honest, I was probably expecting a button, but I think we've got another bit of lead. It's just a little fragment of lead. And look, just off there, that's just caught my eye. There's another funny looking stone. I think it's a stone. Oh no, it could be a potato. Could be a potato. So we've got a little bit of lead. Have we got any decoration? Mm. No. So a little bit of lead. It's been rectangular in shape. Purpose unknown. And what I thought was actually a potato is a stone. It's another stone. It is another stone. It's almost identical colour to the last one. It's a beautiful orangey red colour. But look how smooth it is. And flat as well. Now that's... There's the other one. There's the other one. And the other one's smaller. Look at them. Identical. These are not the kind of stones that you should find in the field. These are like off a pebble beach or they've been rubbed, smoothed to this shape for some reason. Again, can't see any decoration on either of them, but something's going on, that's for sure. Now this one was a, a little chirpy 60, just to hit the clod with the side of my foot and this popped out. I think it's a little fragment of a copper alloy buckle, I think. It's got that sort of rounded shape to it, but yeah, who knows? Could be any age, could be anything. Doesn't seem to be decorated. Well, again, this one didn't sound even remotely like a coin. Again, I just took a little spade fill out the side, and I think we've got a half penny. Right there. Looks to me like a coin. And it is, it's a ship's half penny. 1942 so it's going to be George the sixth and it is again beautiful patina lovely olivey green and that's thanks to uh, to this field being so sandy 
1942. So you see the beautiful big ships. Is that a galleon, is that what you'd call it? On the back, but that's a that's a full house. That is a full house because oh no, it's not. It's not. We've got Victoria. We've got her son, Edward the Seventh. Then we've got his son, George V, but who we're missing? The man who abdicated, Edward the Seventh. Uh, so he ruled for nine months, then George the Sixth got the throne. So we're missing one person. But I've never ever found a coin of Edward the Seventh, so I doubt it's going to happen today. And I just realised, I failed to tell you, George the Sixth. so he ruled from 1940, uh, no, 1936 I think it was, or 37, one or the other. His brother Edward advocate, uh, advocates, abdicates to marry the American divorcee Wallace Simpson. And uh, he then gives up after about nine months, and George the Sixth, who was married to... The Queen Mother, uh, her name was Elizabeth. She was of the Bose Lion family who have their roots near Glams in Scotland, in Angus, which is about half an hour away from where I am. And uh, he ruled from about 1936, 37, all the way through to 1952, when his daughter, Elizabeth II, becomes Queen. Got myself a little 84... I wouldn't say it's the the most fantastic of signals. I don't think it's going to be a coin. But as I say, happy to be proven wrong. Don't know, there's a bit of an irony tone in there as well. Right. If it's not out this time, we'll get the pinpointer. I think we're out. I think we're out. We're just somewhere on the edge. Is that it there? That there. That's it there, I think. It is. So what the hell is that? That is something that's heavy. Hmm. Heavy. And I think it might be might be a bit of bronze again. That's not slag, that's high quality bronze. But what a weird shape it is. A very weird shape. So again, let me know in the comments, but I think that is a fragment of metalworking in bronze. Could be hundreds and hundreds or even thousands and thousands of years old. Right, on to the next. That lump of bronze was right there, and right next to it. There's a 72. Now I just said to myself, I cannot believe I've not had a button. I don't think I can ever remember going out and not finding a button. Now this could be copper. This could be copper or copper alloy. Could be a button. Could be a buckle. Oh, there's something green. There is something green and... Huh. Huh. That is gold gilding. That has got gold gilding on it. And that is... Kind of funny shape. God, what a day I'm having. Right, is it old? Or is it not so old? Right, I'm going to have to... In fact, I tell you what, I'll try and do this on camera. I'm going to have to be gentle, just in case this is an old relic. I'll start with the other side, because I couldn't see any gold gilding on this side. Now, it is a soft brush, before anyone's panicking.
that looks pretty plain to me. Maybe that's the back. So on this side, right. It's definitely got gold gilding. Look, you can see gold down here now as well. Right, I'm going to give this... I think I'm going to give this a wash first. I'm going to give this a wash, and then I'll come back to you. So, in fact, I tell you what, look, stay. Stay for the trip. Some of you want to fast forward a, a minute or so, feel free. I won't be offended, but... So that is 100% gold gilded, isn't it? That is very interesting. Uh, that looks like a crown to me. Could be a fleur de lis again. What a strange looking thing that is. Right, might as well do the back while I'm here. Right, so I think that's the back, that's the front. But I don't think it's that old because to me it looks like it's pressed metal. I'd say it's a couple of hundred years maybe, maybe even a hundred, a hundred and fifty years old. But I'll dry it out, and I'll come back to you in a second. Well, yet again, I'm going to have to come back to you all to tell me what you think this is. Could it be a brooch? Could it be a furniture fitting? Could it be a horse decoration or a bit of leather work decoration? You can see it's been completely covered in gold gilding. Could it even be military? It's got this rope decoration, which tells me I think it's... It's probably going to be 18 to 1900, that would be my guess. But happy again to be proven wrong. So over to you all. Let me know in the comments below. That's the old castle on my left hand side. You can see the sun is starting to set. And just here, I got myself a bit of a mixed signal. It was a 73, 74. And just put the soil, uh, the spade in just to turn that over. And when I did so, out popped that. And that is another lead token. Another lead token. I think I'm on about, is that four or five today? This is a big one. We've got a couple of smalls. And we've got a few big ones. This one has got four dots. Can just make out one just there, it's a bit corroded. But four dots and a cross. And on this side, it's got another star. It's got another star with three dots. So we've got all kinds of dots going on today. Some of them are blank, some of them have got two dots on the back, some of them have got a star on the back. Some of them have got a letter R on the back, but it's a little bit misshapen again. It's been battered about slightly, but clearly of a similar period to the other ones. Great, great! What a day! I'm going to need, I'm going to need two hands to show everything that I've found today. I've had so many signals; it's been unbelievable, unbelievable. Right. Let's see if we can get in in the final half hour. Got myself an absolute screamer of an 89. And look, see these footprints? I think this is me the last time I was in this field. And look, they go past and then I turn to the right. Now, if you remember, the last time I was in this field, I couldn't actually dig because about one inch underneath the, uh, the soil was frozen solid and I think this is one of the targets that I got that last time and look at that I think we've got a weight I think it is now 
I did leave little lines, but I think it's been washed away. Because I did wonder what happened to... Because I think I got two or three signals, but I just simply couldn't get them out of the ground. And I think this is a weight. It looks like a weight to me. Or is it even a plug? It's got a circle there in the middle. No, I think that's a weight. I think that is an old-fashioned cup weight. So you would stack various different weights within one another. And it is, look, I can see a letter there. Not a letter, a number. It looks like a two. And I was going to say it looks like it weighs about two ounces. Or it feels like it weighs about two ounces. Right, I'm going to have to give this a little wash. I don't think it's particularly old. I was kind of hoping maybe it was going to be medieval, but... Oh, look at that, you can see there's quite a bit of lettering in there. Look at it. It's got quite a bit of letters. So I think it's going to be maybe Victorian, or possibly Georgian. And uh, it's probably made of copper, of some description. Well, the finds just keep on coming, don't they? Right, I'll dry this out, and I'll get back to you in a second. Again, this is another first. Um, this one is covered in stamps. This is absolutely covered in stamps. So we've got two ounce zero Z, which is um, one ounce is 28.375 grams. So it's about um, just under 60 grams. Um, it's got CO, then there's a, a stamp going the other way, which is three something. Then down here, there's something, I think it says S-O-L-I-D. Then over here, going in that direction, it says P-E-R-T-H, which is Perth, which is the local sort of city to this area, um, just about five or six miles away. And then down here, we've got another stamp, which has got a figure in the centre. So, yeah, I'm going to have to have a little bit more of a look at this when I'm home. And then it's also got a little lead pellet that goes all the way through. So possibly someone's been fiddling the weight and they've added a little lead bit in the middle. Or when it was made, it was slightly out of weight, so they've added the lead to, uh, to make it exactly two ounces. So again, date-wise, I'm guessing it's probably going to be Victorian, but it could be older, could be Georgian. Which would put it sometime, what, George III, 1760 to 1820. Um, could be earlier than that, but it also could be later. So it could be more Victorian, 1830s through to 1901. So let me know once again in the comments what you think. What a day. What an absolutely fantastic day I'm having. And the signals just keep on coming. 85, could be a coin, could be, I don't think it is, but could be. Right, I think it's in there, and it is. So, let's get the uh, Garrett carrot out for what well, might be the last time, because I've only got about 10 metres of field left. Right. Oh, I think we're in this clod. I'll tell you what, I think I've got a button at last. Well, I say at last, I don't ever want to find a button, but um, I said I can't believe that I've not found one, and I think I have. But I've just dropped it. But there you go. And you know what? I think if it is a button, then it's gilded or decorated, one or the other. Let's turn that off, I don't need it anymore. Well, I did say that I never ever go detecting and don't get a button, but this is definitely, that's a button, 100%. That's actually a bit of fabric there. A little bit of thread, look. And just left on it from when it was lost. There's another bit. So, looks like it's gold gilded. 
possibly silvered. It's a very heavy little button. A very heavy little button. Right. Give it a wee rub a dub dub. Mm hmm. Well, if it had any detail, I think it's long gone, but I'll do my best to give this a wee clean up off camera and get right back to you. Well, there's a maker on the back. Yeah, but I just can't quite make it out. Just can't make it out. R A A R A C, possibly. Yeah, it's pretty pitied. It's strange because it looks like it's been gold gilded on the back. Quite a substantial little loop on it, but on this side it's silvered. But I can't see any remnants of any decoration at all, possibly. A couple of letters there, maybe, but unfortunately has had it. But date wise, it's probably going to be sometime George the Third era through to Victoria, so seventeen sixty through to maybe nineteen hundred. So again, if you know then let me know in the comments below. This is the day that just keeps on giving. <laughs> I got a 73, a little bit scratchy. I kicked the soil away and I found this little thing straight away and I thought, ah, it's a little bit of aluminium. And then, look there, a couple of letters and look on the edge. It's silver. It's stamped silver. There's the lion, the assay mark for sterling silver. And then there's a few letters, there's a Q, there's a Q and there's a, don't know what that is, but there's definitely a letter Q, so I'm sure one of you will know what year that is. And then it looks like we've got an A and an R, so it's a curious little, now if you remember I got one in, a, in another permission that I've got, a sort of rolled up piece of lead, eh, not lead, sorry, silver. And this is another little folded strip of silver. So I don't know if someone's, you know, going to melt it down for scrap. I don't know. I don't know what it is off of. Maybe a walking stick or, I don't know, cigarette something or other. Or cigarette smoking thing. But look at that. Look how soft it is. I can just easily bend that out. And it is a little strip of silver so there we go sterling silver as well as a silver coin i'm a happy chappy if you recognize it and let me know but i'm guessing 1850 to 1950 or thereabouts now i've actually found that many things that i can't fit them all in one hand uh, i can't even fit them in two hands and if i do put them in both hands i can't work the camera anyway so what have we got? We've got a little bit of silver I just got at the end there. A couple of unusual pebbles. Let me know what you think about them. Big bit of bronze. A weight. This little thing which is gold gilded. One of my lead tokens. Then we've got Queen Victoria. We've got George the Sixth. We've also got this bizarre looking thing. Not sure what that is. But again, let me know. This is interesting. This is very interesting covered in fleur-de-lis it's been silvered you can see it shining and you can also make out some red enamel coming through there in various places so is it a little bell is it a little horse decoration my god i can't believe how many things i've found today right i'll be back to you in a second once i've had a look at the other bits and here is handful number two. Now, if you found just this on a dig or either the other hand on a day out, that would be a great day. But my God, look at this big lump of lead. I've no idea what that is. There's another three of these lead tokens. This one has got a letter R on the back, or at least it looks like an R to me. Now, this is a curious little thing. A little lead sort of monogram and on the other side what I thought was a bird is I think a cow or an ox so let me know about that one my button I said I 
couldn't remember the last time I didn't get a button and my second last find is a button. Then we've got a couple of pennies, we've got a musket ball, a bit of a buckle, and then probably the star find of the day is this. It is a little penny, unfortunately broken, but it is in incredible condition. And it's Edward I, I believe, which means it dates to the era of William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, and uh, probably sometime around the 1280s, 1290s, into the beginning of the 1300s. So what a find that is. Absolutely blown away with that. So what a day, what a day, what a sight. It's, uh, it's the sight that just keeps on giving. I'm actually really reluctant to leave the field, but I don't have any choice. I'm going to lose the sunlight soon. I've got about a 20 minute walk to get back to my car. So well done to the XP Deus 2. Thanks again for 10,500 subscribers, which is just incredible. If you don't already, if you're not subscribed, then tap the button. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it helps with uh, the growth of my channel. Uh, I should also say a, a big thanks yet again to Regton, who have given me this uh, detector to put through its paces almost a year ago. So I'll do a one-year review just shortly, and uh, hopefully you liked what you've seen. Now, I've also got some great news, because not only have I got... Uh, a lot more of this permission to explore, but as I mentioned before, when I found the big Charles II, I dropped in to see the landowner. He was over the moon. Also gave him a very delicious 12-year-old Highland Park malt whiskey, or single malt whiskey, uh, which he was even more over the moon with. Um, and he tells me that the field uh, next door... Uh, one of the fields I hadn't even realised uh, is called the Gallows. And he says that historically that was where they used to hang people back in the 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, even into the 1700s. They also burned a few witches there as well. And he is on good terms with a farmer next door. He's going to have a word with him and he's pretty confident that he's going to be able to get me permission on the gallows so what a field that would turn out to be well possibly but anyway it's hopefully another excellent permission so thank you all for watching what a day and hopefully another great day to come in the future thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next dig take care